Relax, the keyboard is off, the press box is closed, and the mic is just getting warmed up as the guardian of the blue paint turned writer is about to enlighten us. The show where the writer is fresh off the presses and the ink is not dry. For this week's show, a GM finally arrived in Philly. So this is what it feels like. Welcome to the Hockey Writers, Inc. Join Lance Green and Steel Flyers as we bring you all the latest on the Flyers. Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of the Hockey Writers Inc. of Flyers podcast. I'm your host, Lance Green. And as always, I'm your co-host, Steel Flyers. And Lance, my friend, how's it going in your area? <laughs> it's a little foggy, a little hazy, but uh, all is good in Flyers world right now, I think, right? Uh, um, I, things are looking I, up? I, I think I think we that things are smoking in Philly. Uh, all right, that was sorry. <laughs> that was a horrible joke, but we can go. That was it. It maybe a little too early for that, but anyway. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. Thank you very much for checking us out and tuning in. Lance is the great host with the most, the editor in chief of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and I am your co-host, Steel Flyers, and we're here to talk about Philadelphia Flyers here on the Hockey Writers Inc. All right, folks. We're talking about weight. Are y'all ready? Oh, episode number 127. All right, episode 127. A GA finally arrived in Philly. So this is what it feels like. I, I mean, I, the man came out of the gate swinging. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people, uh, including us, were a little skeptical about uh, the inexperience in Danny Briere coming into this uh, very tough situation very that he was that he was left with. And we went into depth before on how just how hard it was going to be to get out of this. And uh, yeah, he came out swinging. I think he surprised a lot of people, a lot of fans, a lot of GMs around the league as well. Step, uh, you know, took notice to what he just did and uh, maybe took him a little more serious. And just my opinion here. Maybe that's why um, even Carter Hart isn't essentially traded yet, because that same day they were talking like it was just getting finalized too. But maybe they decided to take a step back and uh, you know reevaluate. Uh, Let the dust settle, maybe a little. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, um, folks. I'm I'm going to be the first one to go on record by. We had, uh, I had a lot of doubts about uh, Danny Briere and Keith Jones being um, in the front office there uh, for the Philadelphia Flyers. And um, so far, I've been utterly, completely proven wrong. Um, I have a size uh, 11 that fits completely all the way in. Um, and so I have no problems uh, biting off that um, hunk of. Um, and saying that, hey, I, I, I don't mind eating some crow on this at all. Um, I was very impressed with not only the um, the haul or uh, the what came back uh, for Provorov, but even the complexity of how the whole deal went down. I mean, it's it was a it was a three team deal. I mean, so that that involved, you know. Two GMs, you know, a whole bunch of other scouts or not scouts, but agents and 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 you know the presidents of hockey ops and I mean it's not just uh, so uh, what are you giving me for Provorov? <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> right? So this yeah. is kind of where I'm like, well, wow. So a GM with a plan arrived in Philly and. First thing was, well, I got to get rid of Provorov. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I think for one, it it did multiple things for the Flyers. It gave them some cap room that they much needed. So um, they they did have to take on some cap room and Cal Peterson. Yep. Uh, coming back, but it's a goaltender who the Flyers may want to take a chance on here because if you look. In years back, and, you know, there's a reason why this guy is getting paid five million dollars, right? <laughs> right? It, it hurts a little bit when you when I saw that much money coming back, but you got to you got to be willing to take on something to get something. 
and we got a slew of draft picks and some great prospects, which we'll get into too. But I think this part of it is not as bad as some people think. Now, if you look at it, uh, he's a six foot two goaltender, 185 pounds. He signed through 24, 25 season. He's mm-hmm. 28 now, uh, but you know, predominantly he's been a backup goaltender. Obviously, they had a great guy in Jonathan Quick in that, but he's getting a little older now. Um, as they moved on, they thought, you know, Cal Peterson was going to be the guy, and he kind of stumbled a little bit when he was given the reins. And, you know, in a sense, got him traded here. And the Flyers are in a position where they can take a little chance here on this guy. If you looked at this guy's numbers, say back in 1819 season, he played like 11 games. He he had a 2.60 goals against average and 924 save percentage. Um, Aside you, from Arison, I'll take those numbers all day. Right, but you look at 1920 season. He he played in eight games. He he had 2.64 goals against average and 922 save percentage. Uh, 2021, he played in 35 games and, and had a goals against average of a 2.89 and a 9.11 save percentage. So, you know, uh, and going into 2021, 2022, 37 games played, 2.89 goals against average, uh, just shy of a, a 900 save percentage, but he won 20 games that year. And, uh, you know, it, it, it looked to be his team That's- for the taking, but... This year he definitely stumbled. He played ten year or yeah. ten games with the Kings. He he his numbers went way up. Uh, his his goals against average went way up, and you know his save percentage went way down. He was sent back down to the AHL where he had some pretty decent numbers again. But right. the thing here to look at is the Kings were kind of struggling defensively, and it surprised me that they didn't want to partake in, in pro but they but they tried to well, you know use that cap space to now sign somebody else as well but the, the big yeah. part of it here is cal's world championship numbers all right if you look at he's he played uh three games um this season for in the world championships he has a 0.72 goals against average in those games, and he had a 9.56 save percentage. He won every single game he played in at the World Juniors for Team USA. Okay. Uh, in 2020, 2021, he played in seven games, right, for the World Championships. He had a 1.29 save percentage and a 9.53, uh, oh, I mean, a 1.29 goals against average and a, a 9.53 save percentage. So, you're looking at those numbers when he actually has some decent defensemen in front of him. Uh, he, he's doing pretty darn good for himself. So I think the Flyers, that's why they were originally trying to take a shot at him uh, and and willing to take on a little salary back for and he signed for a couple of years. Who knows? Well, we talked about this in the show's past mm-hmm. where a backup goaltender needed to come in. Uh, okay, a, a a solid quality backup goaltender, right? Because let's face it, Arison still needs to be in the I don't know. I think he could benefit. He could, from playing. but I don't think it would hurt him to get a good full season down there at the Phantoms and see if he can't be successful down there. You know what I mean? And you know, this is the other this is the other thing too, where you know, we we thought that and we've said this before in the shows before. Hart needs somebody that's gonna push him. This guy, I think, is gonna be able to do that. Okay, is gonna be able to push him for time, right? When he if he plays 37 games as a backup goaltender, I don't know about you, but all the numbers that you rattled off to me, save percentage, goals against, right? We're all better than hearts. Even even playing as as few games as he has i'll still take that all day long as a backup all day long will he be a starter could he be a starter i don't know i guess that remains to be seen you know the other thing about this too is that this will still be part of deal or part of fodder um if carter hart is traded 
or, you know, something along those lines, like all the rumors that have been swirling in the whole nine yards as far as that's concerned. We even touched on it at the beginning of the show. But if Carter Hart's traded, you're going to need a guy who can step in there and the pipes, who's, who's not, you know... <laughs> yeah, Sandstrom. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, we mean, won't even get started on him. But well, yes. Okay, well, so there you go. <laughs> yep. Yep. So uh, to go to go along with that, you know, we'll I think we'll get into the open for business kind of uh, tweets and 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 uh, speeches. Yeah. Uh, you know, after this, um, get we get done breaking down this deal. But you know, the other part of this that was great. Um, that people are sleeping on a little bit is the Sean Walker part. Okay, he uh, wasn't just a, he wasn't just a throw-in in my mind. He's another. Right. And, and I also think the same thing about the Helga Grands too. Well, we'll get there. I think that was. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll get there. <laughs> I like time, him. <laughs> right, one at a time. All right, Sean Walker's a 28-year-old defenseman. He's a right-hand shot defenseman. Something that we need L oh so desperately. He's five foot eleven, 196 pounds. Uh, he signed for 265 for one year, you know, so we'll get a guy to kind of be, you know, if he needs to be top four, if if he, you know, falls back to being the fifth or sixth defenseman, that's great too. But, uh, you know, this guy has is, is been around the block a little bit. Uh, he's not going to put up insane numbers uh, offensively, which is fine for me. I'd rather have my defenseman you know, be able to stop the, the puck yeah, and play some defense. And, uh, you know, he, I think he's going to be pretty solid. I, I think he's going to be pretty solid for what they need for the next year to kind of, you know, develop those defensemen that we have in the system uh, already and, uh, you know, let them progress a little bit more um, and, and possibly be ready to take on that position Um the year after, you know, next. Right. Year. No, no, no. Right. So, I'm with you. I'm with you. So, so I, I, I really, I, I'm, I'm all disappointed with the Sean Walker. Um, I, I was, uh, thought that that would be, um, a night nice, that's, that's a, that's a good gap player. Um, uh, a good depth player to have, especially a right-hand shot defenseman, uh, who plays, uh, uh bigger, really is um and has a good game on him you know what i mean and has some time in the league uh as well too um and he looks like he'd be one of those particular types of guys um but Tommy, lance uh, this is what i think has been a, the draft picks mm. right which we'll get into that next but i think that this whole this whole helge Grands, i think what is more of the steal for philadelphia than you know walker peterson i really like this guy um uh, you know I, i've written about him before in some different uh trade scenarios and stuff like that that i spoke on about the possibility of uh ivan getting traded to la uh previously gee we we've talked about this you've written about this. what yeah. it's like yeah. we know <laughs> right right so you know, and then they they decided to move him on to uh, you know Columbus or whatever like that. So it, it is what it is. But uh, they ended up getting one of these guys anyway that I put in that article in, in Helgi Grans. Um, he's six foot three, two hundred and five pounds. He is a right hand shot defenseman. He can skate. He can move his feet pretty well. Uh, he signed through 24-25 season for just $847,000. So a steal there. He is a 2020 second round pick by the by the king. He's he's a Swedish player. So like I said before, we get a little um, European you know, flavor. European flavor, right? We get a little European flavor. Um, he just he just loves to to walk that that blue line. And, uh, you know, maneuver the puck around a little bit and stuff like that. He's not going to be an overly um, offensive right. guy. Don't uh, care. He, don't care. He, he can make that first pass out of the zone. He can really get the play going. But uh, at the oh, same so time. somebody right up along our alley then. Right, right. But, you know, he is defensively responsible as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he kind of went through a little rough patch with uh, – the rain in their AHL team for LA, but um, I think 
that he he's really really good young defenseman and uh, I think it was a steal for for the Flyers. He's got everything. He's got size. He's a right hand shot. He can skate. Uh, you know he can make a good outlet pass. I think that you know maybe he'll be a good call up player this year. At times when somebody gets injured, uh, and he'll be fighting with uh, Zumala, you know, to do that. Maybe um, as well and, too. And, and, and Ronnie, yep. Yeah. But uh, I think he's he's farther along than uh, Ronnie in, in yeah. my in my yeah. uh, assumption here for right hand okay. shot guys. So I think that you know he may even surpass you know Ronnie on that depth chart uh, to be called up. But we have to see how he's going to play yeah. in the Torts yeah. system and all that. I want to see him at camp for sure and what he's able to do because uh, I've heard everything about him. You know, is good. I like the way he plays the game. I've watched a lot of tape on him and I'm really excited about him. So uh, that in my mind, I think, like you said, was a steal for Danny to to get as a throw in there. Um, I see. I don't think any of these guys are throw ins. I, I honestly think that these players are fully scouted. Okay. I I just because they're just names that you wouldn't expect. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, I mean, hey, you know, look, we all were kind of like, you know, they're poking the stick at the flyers going, all right, what do you do? You know, what, what, what are you going to do? And, and, and boy, when they come out and do something, boy, Danny boy comes out swinging, doesn't he? Yeah. So, and the next part of this is let's talk about the players that we got rid of in, in, uh, Kevin Connington. Wait, and, 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 before we get, uh, before we get into the too. stuff that we got rid of, right. let's talk about the, the, the few things that we felt were major needs for the Flyers this season. And they did achieve one of those check boxes by getting the 22nd overall pick in the first round mm-hmm. this year, giving the Philadelphia Flyers the seventh and the 22nd picks in the first round. So as far as I'm concerned, that was a check box that needed to happen. They either needed to get another first or a second. Right? So both, getting yeah. a late first round to me is pert near better than a second. Sure. Well they got they got potentially two seconds as well. So well, next, uh, year. next year, but still that this right. isn't going to be a one year process. We've we've talked about that as well. So um, exactly exactly but as, but as far as the the 22nd overall pick, I, uh, you know, there's there's a bounty of options there. You know, is uh, your guy Gabe going to be there from U.S.? Oh, yeah, uh, I was thinking about that. Know, oh, uh, boy, I was definitely thinking about that. A uh, 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 Colby Barlow uh, from oh, the, the Owen oh. Sound attack sounds nice. Um, or, but, or, or wait for I, it. But I like, I like Callum Ritchie, too. I, I do center. like him, too. Yep, I do Six like him, two, too. 187 pounds. I think they want to go... Um, you know, defense though. So the the and possibilities Debbie there. Friend? No, that's that'd be a stretch at twenty two. Right. I think it'd be a stretch because uh you got yeah. some other defensemen there that they're they're predicting to go. I think he is uh of that caliber to go in the first round. We but think I, he is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, but I think other ones will will tend to go there, but uh I think the Reinbachers and the Pelicas are going to yeah. be gone by 22. Yeah. yeah. Um, but who knows if he, if Danny really likes that one of those guys, uh, Keith Jones is, you know, already said he likes defense. He wants to build through the defense. Right. He went out and got, he went out and got Helgi Gron. So that right. works. Uh, he, he got a solidified and, and Sean Walker a little bit and, and helped to be a, a stop gap for some players. But, um, you know, they, they could potentially move one or two of these second-round picks. They have multiple thirds, multiple fourths in this draft, multiple seconds potentially um, in, in the next year's draft. So they could jump up potentially and get anybody they really want. And, so you know, that's kind of where I'm thinking about that. Down. Yeah, if they wanted to move 
anywhere from 22nd on up to 10. I think they could potentially do it if they're willing to give up enough, or they may just want to hold on to it and get, you know, somebody at 22 that's going to help them out. You know, possibilities are endless. Let's say that. All right. All right. So let's say that you have been handed the keys to the kingdom and you're now the GM and you've been, and you've been given the, the seventh and the 22nd overall pick in the first round of this year's draft. What do you do? General manager, Lance green. Do you um, a stand Pat B trade those two pick or a number two overall pick? I don't or, think that'll happen. Yeah. Or trade one of those picks to get other picks in later rounds or i mean what do you do what do you do i think i think they make the selections where they're at um at the seven we talked about this before i think uh they need a home run guy they need a guy of the face of their franchise the guy that's gonna sell sell jerseys and i think that should be andrew crystal um you know there's other other guys there that are definitely Good players, but um, Crystal, I think, is a guy that is going I mean, to be like. great. Going to be great. We that's talked we about like, him yeah. for a long time. Now at 22, I I don't see the defense. I I think they're going to go defense, but I think they should go potentially a center um, because they want to they want to make uh, Cutter Gauthier a center, and they're trying to get that to happen at Boston. But, um, you know, Will Smith and everybody else is going to go there as, as well as Ryan Leonard next year, who are both right, centers. Right, so right. I don't know if they're going to be able to utilize him as a center. But I, I like Callum uh, Ritchie. He's a big bodied center, got NHL size already at 22. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like him. Yeah. Um, we and, about it, and, it, and, it, and it's a need. It's a definite need. I think he's yeah. underrated. Um or I like a, a, a Colby Barlow. I think he's a big point production guy too. Yeah. But um, uh, if I had to go that, I would go Cristal at seven and then Callum Ritchie at 22. See, I, I would be, a, a, for me, it would be tough because I, I really do like Gay Perot. Um, the, I think he's going to be gone. Yeah. I, I think he's going to be gone in the teens. I, yeah. Okay. But other than that, then I, then I would go with Barlow. Yeah, I mean, definitely if Gabe's there and falls down that far, which I don't think he will. Right, um, right. But I would definitely go with Barlow then if if I couldn't get get my boy Gabe out. Uh, but you know, that, all right. Well, so I like that idea of standing pat and and making those selections because I agree, Lance. I think that the players that are going to be available in this year's draft at those particular spots are. I, I think that's a win win because. Even if you don't get a second round this year, you still got a late first round. So that to me is is just as good as a second round. You know what I mean? And you got two third round picks, two fourth round picks. You know what I'm saying? So if you really wanted a second round pick, you probably could package, you know, some of these guys that we just got or whomever and or a pick or two to throw in. You know what I'm saying? Right? Yeah, uh, they can potentially do whatever they want. Like they said, they now have multiple picks in the third, multiple picks in the fourth this year, multiple firsts this year, um, you know, multiple firsts next year now um, with the the pick we got from Florida. Florida. You know, and, um, and, and potentially multiple second round picks next year as well. So this is what, you know, we were hoping that um, – the old regime could do and and get some picks to start the rebuild, but they dropped the ball and essentially that's why they got fired. Um, so, you know, in in a matter of one trade, Danny Briere's accomplished a lot. Uh, he's, I agree. You know, 100%. he's got he's got the picks like you said that was needed. Yep. We needed to gather some more picks to build you know, Yep. To build the youth, he got rid of you know a guy who's going to be. Uh, a little older and past his prime potentially, or you know, near the end of his prime. And Provorov, when um, this team actually three or four years from now comes around, um, and, and he's got Helgi Granz there, that is a 
uh, a one prospect in my mind. A lot of people don't don't see him, but I really like him. And, yeah, uh, I do too. And and on top of that, he was able to get rid of a couple of contracts, which was great in my mind as well. Uh, he he got Kevin Connington and yep. Hayden Hodgson uh, Hodginson to to go and leave, and then you know that opens up a lot of possibilities to bring in some of these. Uh, Owen McGlotten's, who the Flyers have. You got the, you know, Alex Bumps of the world. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. The David, the David Kaplan's. That yep. uh, Alexis Gendron, who had an amazing, amazing. year oh, 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 in the yeah. queue. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, opening things up for sure. potentially other prospects already in the system that Danny Breer might like that are yet to be signed. And, and giving him opportunity to sign them as well. Because let's face it, Kevin Connington was a 30, you know, uh, some year old defenseman playing in the AHL. Like that is not what that league is for. You know. I'm sorry, that is for, you know, developing youth and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So that every part of this trade screams win for me, for the Flyers. Yeah. Uh, with with a possibility, the only thing being Cal Peterson being the big question mark. It's okay. a big risk. Okay, but still, to me, checks off one of the boxes that needed to be checked off, which was a solid backup, a, a solid proven backup, right? Making and, and $5 million. That's, that's uh, hard to call him a backup. Oh, okay, but in this league, in this day and age, he, one man's gold is another man's cop. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and it's okay. still early, and it's still early in the off season. Uh, potentially right. we could make a lot more moves. Uh, so he 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 might be have a game, They may have a game plan and set yeah. or whatever, or they could possibly like uh, L.A. did, just move him to the minors for the season and pay a percentage of ha- only have to pay him a percentage of his salary towards the cap. Um, so there is all that too. I think we're going to get him into camp and, and read where he's at and, and hopefully he comes in with a new mindset and, uh, you know, a new outlook on things because, you know, things did get rough in LA. Um, but you know, his numbers at world championships and everything else prove that he still got it. Um, but he may have just needed, needed a change of scenery. So who knows? Okay. So I would say that um, overall, we would probably give uh, new administration Danny Breer, uh, general manager, and and uh, and uh, Keith Jones, uh, hockey ops, uh, their first move. I say is an A. Yeah, for sure. That's an A. That definitely gets the salute there. Like you salute. know what you I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that that was impressive to to get out of work and see pop up on my phone for sure. Uh, uh, man, that that's interesting. So, you know, and and the the ballsiness of it to to sit there and say, hey, we're open for business. This this move had to happen, but we're still willing to listen to other other deals, other you know possibilities, and uh, you know. You got to think that, and the rumors have been, of course, surrounding Carter Hart potentially moving. We saw those. Um, there is a, a wealth of teams looking for goaltenders right now. Uh, Kevin Hayes has been linked back to well, Columbus. Well, that that's just a swirling for some of time. As far as I'm concerned, but I think more that I think the one that has more meat on the bones would be Travis Konechny. Well, yes, I was getting there. Uh, D'Angelo as well. Uh, he's out there. Um, the Flyers could retain a portion of his salary if they wish to move him, and it would only be for one year. So right. it wouldn't be such a bad thing. I would like to thing. see what we could do uh, with the wrist aligning thing, too. I don't think you're going to do anything with that. I think people okay. are not going to jump on that bandwagon right. when he's right. 170, minus 170 for his career, right. uh, plus yeah. minus. But TK is is – Dangerous move in my mind. I think you know you could definitely get a lot for him if if you got that much for Provorov, and uh, you know he he is a guy who has now put up multiple multiple seasons of twenty five plus goals a year. Um, but I think you got to leave a little bit of meat on the bone to be there to help play with some of these guys coming in. 
um, you know, the Tyson Foresters, eventually, hopefully, Cutter Gauthier's, uh, whoever we get this year at number seven. Um, you, you can't get rid of everybody. You could. No, no, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. You also have to keep fans in the stands and make it somewhat interesting. You know, right? <laughs> Over the yeah. next couple of years, even if we're right. going to lose and, and, you know, I don't want to say the word tank, but, you know, even if we're going going to lose and go in with a mindset of, hey, we're going to lose a lot of games, but uh, we're rebuilding, you know, where it's it's proving that when trading for over off and, and getting some draft picks and and, uh, you know, picks that are all already in place and, and uh, budding in that sense and being ready to, to join the big club already. So agreed. Agreed. That makes that whole situation really finally something to talk about for the Flyers. It was was nice to see um, a general manager doing their job. I mean, we haven't seen that for, and and I've seen the the comments that were out there, like you know, people were starting to feel, and I've I've witnessed it myself, where I've had really good friends just completely, utterly drop the team because of the 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 multi years of of stinking up the place and not doing what needs to be done when it needs to be done, and blah 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 blah, ad ad nauseum, right? And that's a shame because, and 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 you know, you still you still see that a lot, the frustration of the fans where. You know, look, man, can you guys try to do something? Can, can you try to do uh, – now here we – they came out swinging. There's still a lot of work that has to be done for this team. Yeah. This is not going to all be righted in the first year. Okay, and and folks, fans, whatever, need to understand that exactly what you said. There's going to be some stretches where this team is just going to outright stink and get, you know, every night. I mean, now, are they going to be putting forth the effort, which is what we've seen that has been able to get out of these guys? At least there's an effort there every night. You know what I mean? At least they're trying to do something there. You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those things where, okay, we've seen something good, but there's still a lot more to do. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the fans realize that now, that it's not going to be a quick turnaround. Uh, both Keith Jones and Danny Breer said that as well. Um, but the goal is, is set, and I think they have a great mindset on, on what they want. And uh, they, they went out and made the first big move, um, which needed to be made. And they, they were successful in doing that. Now, even if they're not able to do anything else, um, as far as moving guys out before the season starts, you got to think that come trade deadline that, you know, they could potentially unload some players, um, and, and pull triggers on, and some other things. I think I, most people would have confidence in them doing that now. So like you said, it's not going to be um, done in a single season, but um, you know, we'll have to watch the rest of this off season and um, you know, throughout the next year and, and season and stuff like that to see what they could potentially do at the trade deadline as well. So exactly. I like the moves that they made. I'm, I'm, I feel more comfortable now. Like I, like I said, uh, you know, I was uh, optimistic and and hopeful that they could get stuff done. But uh, you know, cost hiring, optimistic, cost. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Um, but you know, hopeful, just because it's been so, you know, depressing over the last couple of you years. You can only that, be so know, bad for so long. Eventually, yeah. eventually, the sun has to shine on on the thing. You know what I mean? Eventually, the clouds have to break, and then you you have to get to get a little bit of the sunshine flying down here. You know what I mean? So, but I I think we both agree that we're both very much impressed with what uh, Danny B has come out and done, and and what he's been able to garner uh, for this team to try to help improve this team moving forward, and. It points to exactly what we're talking about. And it also points back to what Keith Jones said, too, right? Where they said that they were going to try it from, you know, the blue line out. Well, 
what's the first thing that they did was they did a defenseman, right, a left shot defenseman for two right hand shot defensemen, right, and a goaltender. Oh, well, all right. Uh, you, you know, needed a right hand shot defenseman. That's one box checked off. Needed a backup defender or potentially a starting goaltender if you trade Hart because the guy's making starting money. But is you know th that's kind of where I'm at, right? Yeah, I mean, even if even if both goalies stay, it's it's a it's a tandem. You have a tandem again, and uh, I think that would play into you know Cal's um role where he did so well in la he wasn't yeah. the and guy too. right yeah both of them yeah they, you know um cal wasn't the guy he played behind uh you know a great uh, goaltender who may make you know the hall of fame one day yeah right one of the best american goaltenders of all time for sure but um yeah. in that same token you know carter's used to not having to be that guy he He's kind of stumbled when been given the opportunity to be that guy um, without, you know, having Brian Elliott and, uh, you know, the the realm of others that came in here to kind of backstop him and play a 50-50 split. So, um, exactly. you know, it, it may bring some comfortability back to them as well. Or if Carter Hart goes, we'll, we'll see if Cal can do it with a, you know, hopefully revamped defense in front of yeah. him in, you know, Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so there you go, folks. I mean, I I think we, I think we covered a, a a lot of the trade that we wanted to talk about. Um, this wasn't something that you know we were we were trying to, we didn't want to dive that deep to it because there that was so complex and so, you know, this guy went here for this and that and then turned around and was traded to this team for that and then and blah blah blah. But anyway. Well, Lance, I'll tell you what, my friend, um, I, I have to say this for one. Um, the other day I received a report uh, 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 from uh, analytics, and um, I was blown away. Um, what I was blown away with was the number of, of clicks and the number of impressions and the number of uh, views and and the number of people that have come to the website. So thank you all so very much for you know, for being to the steelflyers.com and checking out all the great stuff that we do from Prospect to Hockey Writers Inc. to the Steel Flyers podcast and everything else that we have there, all our contributors and everything else. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It does not even it. Thank you very much for all of the 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 views and just for supporting us and being there for us. So thank you very much. You guys get the hockey Raiders Inc salute for all of your good, great work. And, and we really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Lance, my friend, do you got any, anything coming out? Uh, I got to tell you, man, your draft, the show was a hit, right? I mean, we had, trip double the number of people that we uh normally have what watched the the draft show and i mean it was a great show it was an article um got anything else out there for us brother <laughs> i definitely have a notepad full of ideas and stats and all kinds of stuff uh just need a little time to get some stuff out there i definitely have uh some prospects i want to hit with uh pertaining to prospect watch and of course always you know uh keeping you guys up to date on the Fl philadelphia flyers as well so i mean i gotta tell you man when when everything before anything was even announced my phone was blowing up because lance is the man with the information he's like you see proveroff was traded i'm like what <laughs> so i'll tell you what man really appreciate all you do here lance um, can't do it without you, man. Um, uh, they don't call us the Batman and Robin for Philadelphia Flyers podcast for nothing. Um, cause you're Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for checking us out, man. I'm steel flyers. You can find me on Twitter at steel flyers 52, and you can find us at the steel flyer site at steelflyers.com. Go over there the shop and get yourself some swag. Get yourself a t-shirt says hockey writers, Inc. on it or steel dot com on there go over there and check it out 25 dollars plus 
shipping and handling. All you have to do is go and check it out, and it'll be able to get PayPal and credit cards and all other happy stuff. So go there and get yourself a T-shirt. Check out the Steel Flyers website. Thank you all very much for watching. We'll catch you all in the next episode of the Hockey Writers, Inc.